Hey there, it's Taj with Home Oregon Coast. We have created a tool that you can use to underwrite vacation rental investments and see if you like what they're projecting for you. This is part one of a two-part video, so be sure to start here and then jump over to part two to see the whole process. Hello everybody, it's Taj here with Harcourt's Home Oregon Coast. We want to show you a tool that we created that can help you if you are interested in buying a vacation rental investment to underwrite that deal. What does underwriting of a deal mean? We're gonna dive into that in this video and show you the tool that we're gonna make available to you after the video as well. We've been helping people buy vacation rentals on the Oregon coast here for the better part of a decade and we really know the process inside and out. If you haven't seen our other videos about vacation rental buying here on the Oregon coast, be sure to jump over to our YouTube channel and check out some of those other videos, including one that's going to be really important for today's topic. Uh, what you need to know about regulations on the Oregon coast and then how to identify what makes a good home a good vacation rental. Those two videos are available now on our YouTube channel so be sure to check those out and subscribe to our channel right now if you want more videos about buying and selling real estate on the Oregon coast. For this video we are going to show you a tool we created. It's a simple spreadsheet but it has a lot of powerful formulas behind it to show you if a vacation rental home is a good investment or not. Let's jump over to that tool right now. Here we are inside of our tool or our pro forma, our underwriting tool, whatever we wanna call it. Bottom line is this spreadsheet is gonna help you know if a purchase is a good one when it comes to buying a vacation rental that you want to try to generate some revenue, whether that's just trying to cover some expenses or trying to be a profitable business for you. This tool is gonna help you figure that out. So. I'll go through a really high level quick overview of what this tool is and then I'm going to dive into showing you how to take this tool and use it yourselves. So what we've got here, this is just a, a generic 123 Main Street. You can take this tool and uh, you can rename it based on what, you, uh, what the address is that you are interested in. Uh, the critical part of this tool is that the formulas allow you to, to manipulate the cells with the blue text in it, but the dark, the black text is going to uh, auto-populate based on changes. So if you need to maybe furnish the property and do some repairs, a 10% um, rent-ready cost, just updated that from 30,000 to 75,000. So that just shows you what you can do to manipulate the spreadsheet and work through and just read what this is and make the change on the blue. What's your interest rate from the lender you've been talking to, for example? What's the gross rent that you're forecasting the property's gonna do? And so on and so forth down the line. And then once you've filled out all of the details on the left, visually you've got a very nice uh, output of what the projections look like on the right side of this tool. So cash flow, your cap rate return, your gross yield return, and then a timeline idea of how is this gonna perform over time. I think it's really critical when you're thinking about buying a vacation rental, especially on the Oregon coast, is you know, you're know you gonna find a lot of houses don't quite cash flow in the positive in year one or two, but they can get there in year three, four, and five. And you don't want to discount something that maybe doesn't break even in year one, but looks phenomenal by the time you hit year three, four, and five. After all, you're buying this for the long term. You're not buying this for a one or a two year investment. For the most part, you're thinking five, 10, even 15, 20, 25, 30 years down the road. So what does it look like that far down the road? That's important for you to know, and that's what this tool is showing you. Now what we want to do is go ahead and walk through a real world experience of how you can take this tool and use it to find yourself a vacation rental investment. One thing I'll show you, we're on tab two of the spreadsheet. Tab one is informational for you 
on how to use this tool. So it walks you through, even from the fundament fundamentals of understanding what it means to invest in real estate, for those people who are absolutely brand new at it, if you're seasoned, skip these first parts, set your goals, um, consideration of what a good vacation rental market is, um, or a long-term rental market, STR, short-term, long-term, LCR. Um, finding a, a good real estate agent, hi. <laughs> um, what's the current market average rate? You know, it just walks you through all these things. But here we get to the important part for this exercise, how to find a vacation rental investment. So here are some really good sources that are available for everyone, regardless of how you're starting out. Some more seasoned investors might have some more uh, complicated tools, tools that even cost money. None of these cost money. Uh, and then things to consider, does it have an HOA? What's your insurance cost? And then um, the revenue potential. This link takes you to um, tools that can help you understand the projected revenue, the gross revenue, the overall annual revenue that you would make with a vacation rental. So it links you to one tool that's very common called Air DNA. Um, so I'll show you that tool, but I'll also show you if you don't use that tool, that tool, tool sometimes has a cost to it, how you can try to come up with the idea of what a gross revenue amount would be based off of a simple search of Airbnb, the top number one uh, aggregator of vacation rentals in the world. So with that, what I'll do here is show you what the process looks like. So let me go back to the spreadsheet here and we're gonna kind of start at the top and work from the bottom. First thing I need to do is find a property. Well, everybody knows Zillow, so I pulled this up a little earlier. I went ahead and tried to find a search in the vacation rental market of Lincoln City, one of the most popular vacation rental markets on the Oregon coast, also happens to be our home base. And I found one that I thought looked pretty cute here of um, the four searches. I did some filters. I just, whatever you know your budget is, set your budget. Um, if you're wondering you know, what makes a good vacation rental home, again, go to our YouTube and you can find that information there in a previous video we did. I set it for a three bedroom, two bathroom home, a very popular vacation rental size. And then I did homes, not condos. And um, I tried to get close to the beach um, because that's generally what guests want. And so I came across four results and of the four, I really liked this one on Southwest Coast, priced at 565. And so I um, just looked through the photos previously, but I'll filter through these real quick for you guys. I think it just has a cute coast feel to it. It's um, really close to the beach. It's actually just across the street from ocean front. You don't see the ocean from this house little bit of a, a mark against it, but the location makes up for that a little bit. You're probably three, four, four, four or five blocks from the beach, let's call it. It's got a hot tub, I like that. I like this outdoor sitting area that's a little bit different um, than some other houses have. It's got a little bit of privacy feel to it. And again, it's got a cute coast feel to it. So I like everything I'm seeing, I'm not, considering um, what the regulations of this house are for this exercise. But again, regulations are extremely important and we do have a video on that. So be sure to check that video out. Here you go, like this is what's attractive to this house. It's what we call second row. Second row from the beach, one block, one, one house off on the opposite side of the street and then uh, the beach access there's actually two, one to the north and one to the south, both between like three and five blocks away. So I like that ability for the guests to be able to walk to the beach. So this one works for me. I'm gonna um, say, let's, let's run the numbers. Now, I don't see the Zestimate. A lot of times you can use the Zestimate to get a feel for, is this a good buy at 565 or not? Better yet, talk to your real estate agent. We're available for that to determine, hey, if I want to buy this house, is 565 a good price? One thing that's helpful to know on that is if you can figure out how many days it's been on the market, that will give you an idea of if it is overpriced or not. 
this one being on the market for five days, the um, is it overpriced? Based on that solely, it, it's too early to tell. If you see a house that's been on the market for more than 30 or 45 days, you can start to get a, com a comfortability about it being probably overpriced at that point. For now, um, if I wanted to move on this thing really quickly, I think we're probably gonna have to be reasonably close to the purchase price. And that's a good way to be conservative with my numbers if I start at that purchase price. So what I've got here is a listing price. Uh, the listing price is 565. And I'm gonna go ahead and see how this report looks at the purchase price of 565. Now, some of these things are automatic. Um, they're pre-populated, I should say. And so a standard down payment for vacation rentals is 20 or 25%. And that's gonna be based on your ability to do more or less down. 20% is pretty much the minimum requirement. Some people like to put a little bit more down to build a little more equity into their house. It also brings down a little bit of the um, monthly expenses. I'll keep it at 25% down. And then closing costs and loan origination fees, these are gonna be based on your lending situation. Closing costs uh, are gonna include um, title and government uh, fees, uh, maybe some prepaid taxes and things like that. And, and some of your loan fees will be wrapped into that too. And then loan origination fees, That's that is gonna be something that is gonna be case by case basis, but at least we're showing something here. We've got 3% for our closing costs. Hey, we're gonna stop this video here so it doesn't get too long. Part two is in our YouTube feed, so make sure to go over there and jump into part two so you can see the rest of the process to underwrite a vacation rental.